So we've had uh, 10 months, nine, 10 months of absolute torture through lack of mainly crab. Most of the grey seal pups last year born in the northeast either had to go into rehab or were put to sleep. And, and you know what? It's absolutely heartbreaking. And we really just need to know the answer of what's happened and what's caused it. Tonight, after months of investigation, we reveal new evidence pointing towards that answer. Heading to sea from Whitby, James Cole has fished crab and lobster here all his life. This family's walked away from it. My brother and his son, they sold their boat this year and have come out of the industry after a lifetime and generations. They, they gave it up because they were feared that another die off would finish us. And if we do get, have another die off, it'll finish me. Fishing and tourism. An economy revolving around safe, clean seawater. Instead, month after month, diebacks. Thousands of crustaceans washing up dead on the spectacular beaches of North Yorkshire. Well, today, it's razor clams. On another day, it could be starfish, crabs or lobsters. What is it out there in the North Sea which is continuing to kill these creatures time and time again? The government line is unchanged. Sea algae is the probable cause of this disaster, not chemical pollution. But tonight we can show how the government's environment agency used a photo of a totally unrelated pollution incident to try and make its case. It was last September. Crab and lobster fisherman Stan Rennie couldn't believe what he saw at this spot in Hartlepool Harbour. I came down to go to sea. As soon as I got to the top of the ramp, um, I noticed that the dock was ginger, and it was all around. It was all around. Took video, took photos. So I don't normally do. I phone the Environment Agency Pollution Hotline. To his amazement, the government's own pollution watchdog then used his photo of this unrelated dust spillage in one of their reports. After various levels of management and the complaints procedure, they got back to say that it wasn't red algae, it was actually scrap dust pollution. So they'd put scrap dust pollution in both of their reports to justify and push the theory of red algae. The Environment Department, DEFRA, told us it categorically did not use Stan's photo to bolster its case. But as you can see, here's their Environment Agency report seemingly doing just that. Fishermen, campaigners and scientists say the prime suspect killing crustaceans is likely to be pyridine, a toxic byproduct of generations of teesside, steel and chemical industries. Trouble is, no in-depth research of pyridine here existed. But in recent days, all that has changed. It's almost an instantaneous violent response. You're seeing them be, being really aggressive to the point, and the best way I can describe this is the crab doing somersaults in the tank. Pyridine is introduced to a crab as part of new research. And then they end up on their back, and then within six hours they're dead. This new scientific research from Newcastle, York and Hull universities says the government's algae theory doesn't stack up. In my view, it's, it's an almost untenable position to take. And the amount of evidence that's building up, the fact that we can measure pyridine here, the fact that we know how it's going to move down the coast, the fact that we know how it poisons the crabs, and the timings all match up. None of which we knew before. None of which we knew before, to be fair, but we know it now. And their computer modelling shows that if dredgers dump sediment offshore from the River Tees, pyridine in it doesn't sink. It travels rapidly along the coastal fishery. DEFRA insists it's done extensive research and algae, not chemical pollution, remains the likely cause. But it says it will study this new research carefully. So is dredging, excavating the tees to keep it open for shipping, the primary reason sea life is dying? Back in the spring, DEFRA stated... Samples of dredged material must meet the highest international standards protecting marine life before it is permitted to be disposed of at sea. If samples analysed for contaminants do not meet the standards, the disposal to sea of that material
will not be licensed. But tonight we can show that DEFRA sometimes sets aside pollution standards here. One of the dredgers the company PD Ports uses on the river. Channel 4 News has obtained a routine licensing document issued to the company by CFAS, part of DEFRA, on December the 20th. The document finds the toxic levels in routine dredge samples sometimes exceed what's allowed to be dumped at sea. Viewed in isolation, these results would preclude material from continued disposal at sea. However, the Tees has a documented history of specific industrial activity which has led to a noticeable presence of man-made contaminants. It then concludes... Considering the local context of the Tees, the results do not preclude material from continued disposal at sea. There you have it, in black and white. When it comes to dumping filth at sea from the Tees, the pollution watchdog appears to waive the guidelines. DEFRA doesn't deny this happened, but says because pollution levels were declining, this was allowable and it was not breaking the rules. The dredging company, PD Ports, does not deny it happened either, but says it relies on regulators to decide what can be dumped at sea and operates entirely within the regulatory framework. We've had 24 porpoises now have washed up dead this year. Former police officer turned SEAL rescue volunteer Sally Bunce says wildlife along the coast is paying the price for lax environmental oversight. You kind of think, what, what's the point in having all this um, legislation in place if we're going to set it aside? Um, so, yeah, I, it, it, I've been astounded, actually, absolutely astounded, and I've completely lost faith now in those who are in a position of protecting our marine environment. I have no faith whatsoever in their ability to do so. But there's more. We have a source who wanted to remain anonymous. He has years of experience in tease dredging with PD ports. And he says environmental controls on the river are a joke. They would routinely sample the edges of berths, so the areas where there's less toxic material. And they'd only take a sample from the surface of the riverbed, which is not likely to be as toxic. They wouldn't go deeper than just a few centimetres. That's manipulation. We put that to PD Ports, who said they operate to the highest standards and will readily investigate credible evidence of any wrongdoing. South Bank Quay on the Tees Estuary, a centrepiece of Tory regeneration, a massive new freeport. Big promises being made of investment and jobs. It is the biggest brownfield site in Europe, the showpiece for the government's whole levelling up project. But to achieve it, they're going to have to dredge out a colossal amount of some of the most polluted river sediment in the world, take it out and dump it in the North Sea. They insist this is safe. Generations of heavy industry here simply use the Tees as a waste dump. It's a no-go area with high toxicity. Historically, there's been so much pollution. That area hasn't been disturbed in decades for a reason. Hidden in the hundreds of pages of licensing application to allow the South Bank Key development to go ahead lies an ecological time bomb. The sediment samples of hundreds of sites on the riverbed. Amongst them, scores of sites so polluted they exceed internationally recognized guidelines for dumping at sea. In a statement the sampling company accepted, some samples did exceed international guideline levels. Its client, the Freeport developers, also did not deny the sampling figures, but said they followed different European guidelines on sea dumping, so this sampling evidence doesn't apply. You'd think local councils on Teesside would be desperate to get the development going and the jobs it will bring. In fact, three councils now want to hold. I think they need to pause what they're doing at the moment and just have a real rethink on what's, what's caused what's happened. Um, we need to have an independent investigation of some sort. Developers claim, with considerable public support on Teesside, that the coming Freeport will be a major economic boost. Along the coast, they're a bit more sceptical.
You're talking hundreds of thousands of people who are employed within tourism. Stays here has nothing but tourism. This place will become a dead zone if people can't go onto the beaches and enjoy the water and can't walk the dogs on the beaches around here. Back in Whitby, in what was one of Europe's biggest crab and lobster fisheries, James Cole gets what he can from the sea. The Tees is known for being the most polluted river in Europe. Always has been. And anything that comes out of there must have stamped on it, handle with care. Toxic. Landfill, please. So calls, therefore, to pause the coming dredge pending independent assessment will continue to grow ever louder.